this is Julia and this is Laura. We're professional food photographers and founders of Food Photo Circle. And we're here to share our knowledge with you. We know how hard it is to get started in food photography. We've been there. But don't worry, we've got you. In this video, you will learn the basic techniques that will immediately elevate your food photography. So are you ready? Let's dive in. So today we're going to talk about the most important things about food photography. This is a mini crash course and at the end of the course you are going to be able to walk away and start taking amazing pictures. So because one does not simply buy a camera and become a good food photographer. No, 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 no. We need to learn the skills and we have the right mini course for you. So what are you going to learn? in this mini course. You're gonna learn the basic gear and camera settings. So you start shooting in manual mode with more confidence. I know it's scary, we've all been there at the beginning. We are also like, mm, this is crazy, but we're gonna explain it to you in a simple and effective way so that you can implement it straight away. And then we're gonna teach you a little cheat on how to get started using manual mode without feeling too overwhelmed. So stick around. And then we are going to teach you about the most easy, simple and effective natural light setup that, again, you can implement straight away. We are going to teach you a little bit about composition and styling, again, so that you can elevate your pictures immediately. And then golden nuggets. We are going to teach you how to save like hours and hours of time and frustration by implementing the right shooting and editing workflow. And we're going to teach you how to get consistent results with your editing so that you can start developing your unique style. A lot of good stuff. Stick around until the end. So first of all, let's get started with manual mode. And manual mode is again, like something super, super important for you to get to the next level and make your photos stand out. So here, uh, what we're going to do is that obviously everyone is a photographer until they need to switch to manual mode and da, da, da. Da, da, da. <laughs> exactly. So you really need to like, at some point you really need to get to the manual mode because this is something super super important but again like we're gonna give you like a little little hack there to get you started before you completely switch on the manual mode but this is like just like a learning point here so what you need is that obviously the basic gear so mirrorless uh, camera or dslr and 50 millimeter lens Obviously, you can start with the kit lens, but uh, my my food photography changed completely when I got the 50 millimeter lens, and also like 50 millimeter lens is not as expensive as well, and it's like the it's like the killer. It's like it's like so so powerful thing that I would highly highly recommend you to get it because this is gonna make your photos pop, and a tripod. Tripod is your best friend. I know you want to save money or something, but first of all, get the tripod because this is essential and it's going to make your photos pop. And another thing is a phone because phone again, like if you want to speed up uh, your workflow and you want to lower the production cost, especially when you want to just uh, get some photos to social media, then phone photography is perfect. Obviously for clients work, I never use my phone, but when I just want to have like a quick social media post, then phone is perfect. So first of all, shoot raw. Shooting raw is so, so important. So if you don't believe me, then listen to Gordon. Gordon is your guy. And if he's telling you to, to get raw, raw, then go raw. And again, like raw photos are essential because with raw photos, you can get more data on your photos. You have better, better editing power. You have uh, best possible quality, like at all. Like this is like, so so important because at first when i started out i remember like every photographer was telling me start shooting raw start shooting raw then i start shooting raw but then the first thing what uh, what happened was that my memory card was full like this 
And this is like the classic thing what happened. And then I was like, yeah, whatever. I don't see the difference really. No, so stupid. Anyways, <laughs> <laughs> anyways, I switched back to JPG. And what happened was that later on, I regretted my decision. Gordon got, up, got upset. So, yeah, Gordon got upset. Like <laughs> Gordon got like really upset. So I was like, okay, I'm going to listen to Gordon and I'm going to switch back to Raw. And so what you need is that just like get bigger memory cards. Like nowadays, the memory cards are not as expensive as they were like five years ago or something like that. So get a big, get the bigger memory card and thank me later. So shoot Raw and listen to Gordon. To give you some examples here, uh, mastering manual mode will give you the skills to nail exposure every time and to use your camera creatively and to shoot with confidence. So once you master manual mode, you can take shots like this. For example, you can freeze the action and get this beautiful, dreamy, uh, snow-powdered sugar. That's Laura's photos, beautiful. And then, or you can get client shots like the one in the middle, the brownies I shot for a client of mine. Very powerful, couldn't have done that if I didn't know the basic manual mode stuff. And you can get shots like the drink where your subject really pops and you can see that it's beautiful, dreamy and the colors are matching and it's super powerful. So let's have a look at some techniques in the next slides. So first of all, exposure and light meter. Exposure and light meter are the key, key elements to get you started with manual mode. So here, what you need to do is like, first of all, check your camera manual because every camera is obviously different. So we can't give you like exact uh, roadmap here, but what you need is uh, check your uh, light meter because for example, in my camera, my light meter is in the viewfinder and on my screen and then on my top screen as well. So I had three places where's the light meter. Obviously it's like same everywhere, but that's just where I check. So here, what you need to understand is like uh, check if uh, if the light meter is on the plus side or minus side or zero. So what you want is like always check the sign in like always get it in the middle, because even if you like, for example, you look at the photo, you're like, oh, OK, this is like looks completely fine, even even though it uh, like on the light meter, it shows that it's under exposed. Like trust the camera settings because sometimes, for example, it's a sunny day and then the screen is not telling you right whatsoever. And on post, you're like, oh no, you get to Lightroom photos and you're like, okay, this photo is super bad. It's so underexposed. It's so overexposed. The photos are clipping and it just like doesn't make any sense. And even on post processing, you can't save that much data. So for, for better quality, get it somewhere in the middle, somewhere close to the zero. And you can trust this one because later on, again, like in post-processing, you can do your creative choices later, but get the raw files like as good as possible. So definitely check your camera manual. I know we are like a broken record again here, but your camera manual is essential. But once you like start to understand the, the light meter, then uh, the manual mode starts to make sense because for me, it was like the key element. I was like, oh, okay, so this one works like this. And you can even like try and test it out, like take some photos overexposed, take some photos underexposed, like play around with like different settings and look at on the screen, look at on your computer. Like then you start to understand what's happening there. And when you play around with your settings to try and get the light meter to zero, always remember the exposure threesome, which is basically the ISO, the aperture and the shutter speed that they have a little threesome going on there. And whenever you change one of these settings, you need to remember that you need to change at least another one if not both of the other settings to compensate for the exposure. For example, if you increase your ISO, it's because you want to let in more light. You want your photos to look brighter. So you increase your ISO. Now you need to remember that you need to change either the shutter speed or the aperture to compensate for the increase in light. So if you capture more light, with one setting, you need to use another setting to reduce the amount of light. Otherwise, you will get an overexposed images, image. So if you increase your ISO to get your image brighter, 
you need to uh, lower maybe your shutter speed or close your aperture to balance out the light and get the light meter on to zero. So always remember the exposure threesome. So here, here we have like a little, little cheat here uh, that gets you started, especially when you start out with manual, you might be like super, super confused. So first of all, when you have no clue about manual mode, start with aperture priority. So again, like every camera is different. So check your manual, blah, blah, blah. But, <laughs> but get, like usually it's like AV or A, which means aperture priority. And this one means that, um, first of all, place your camera on a tripod. Secondly, uh, set the camera on aperture priority set your ISO to 100 and set, set your aperture to between f3.5 uh, to f5.6, uh, depends on your camera lens. But in general, that means that you don't have to mess around with exposure. When your camera is on aperture priority, that means that you play around with aperture. You put it to f1.8, you get the blurry photos, you put it to f7, you, everything is sharp. So then you can uh, get to know the aperture and you're going to meet the exposure later. But first of all, uh, get started with this little cheat here and let your camera automatically set the shutter speed for correct exposure. Because again, like if you have like too many people in the room, like too many, like you have a, a aperture, you have a shutter speed, like you have ISO, like there's like too many people to meet. So first of all, get to know your your another best friend first best friend is tripod obviously but the second best friend is aperture aperture so so get to know the aperture go deep into this one make some photos like you can set up like the same photo like the same pancake there is like you shoot some photos on aperture 1.8 another one aperture seven and just like do different photos because then you understand what aperture is actually and definitely take this one into practice as well because otherwise uh, it's only a theory so what you need is a hands-on camera and start practicing so get the aperture priority there's no shame on aperture priority aperture priority is completely fine at first when you start out uh, and... even after 10 years yeah, i still exactly. use aperture priority why would i worry about three things when, yeah. when i can only yeah. worry about two things exactly <laughs> exactly so again like you can start out with this one and this is a perfect starter for you next up super important Laura is the queen of natural light, so she's going to teach you everything, like the simplest setup to get your shots to just look pro. Exactly. So may the light be ever in your favor. So again, light is one of the things that makes or breaks your photography. And start training with your eyes with light because light is essential. Light is so, so important. But here we're just going to give you like a little, little shortcut to get you started with your food photography with natural light. So first of all, don't use built-in camera flash. No, 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 <laughs> Error. <laughs> So please no flash photography, unless you have another flash that Julia is, is, a, is a master and there is a, there, there's a complete different setup. But don't use the camera flash that's like usually you can see there, like don't use it. Please don't use it because this is gonna break your photography. Super ugly. So first of all, what you need to do is that Get a nice window light. So stand next to the window and use a side light. Bam! Your photos are completely, completely different. Because first of all, when I started, then I remember I used my, I shot all the photos in the dark kitchen because I thought that food photography need to be done in the kitchen. No, it doesn't need to be. So instead, at some point, I moved to my office uh, because on, in my office there was a perfect window light. So definitely look around in your home or wherever you're working, or even if it's you're, you're in a cafe, just get next to the window, get the nice window light and shoot it from the side and get the side light there. And this is like a perfect, perfect starter for you. And this is gonna make your photos 
completely different because again like when i used to shoot in a dark dark kitchen then the food was tasting delicious but the photos were like so so ugly and it doesn't make any justice for the photos so definitely find the window and stand next to the window and use a side light another tip uh, for natural lights uh, to get you started is that uh, again like avoid direct sunlight because direct sunlight what you're gonna do is that you have like some blown off areas and this doesn't make any sense and in post-processing you can't do that much as well so avoid direct sunlight but if you have like the direct sunlight there then you can obviously like for example you can cover it up with the white sheet and this one makes a huge huge difference because what you want is you want that soft nice look there and you don't want your highlights clipping there so uh, get as close to the window as possible so you have another best friend window <laughs> three best friends now yes. tripod aperture and window so another topic we have here is composition and styling so here we're just gonna give you a fundamental concept and some few tips just to get you started. So first of all, what do you think? Yeah, <laughs> that's the look that you get when uh, after fiddling around for your with your composition for hours and then you nail it. So here we're gonna give you some tips to get you started and composition and styling are keys to improve your photography straight away without much effort so here are some starting points for you let's have a look haha -ha. this is one of my favorite and most effective and simplest rules for composition that you can apply to your photography to instantly make it better so you can i'm sure you've shot with your phone before you know that you can activate the grid and what the grid is it basically divides the frame into nine equal uh, rectangles and what it does it explains where your eyes and how they move through the picture and the focus point the sweet spots where they tend to go first so if you place your subject either on the lines or even better at the intersection of the lines so like the plate and you can see the spoon is there these are your points of interest your sweet spots so if you place your subject on these spots bam you already have a super simple and effective very effective composition another thing uh, that's going to make your food photography completely stand out is negative space. So by negative space, I mean that you have to look uh, for the gaps around the main subjects. And what you need there is you need to leave some breathing room for your eyes. And by doing this one, you can reduce clutter. And it's also like, for example, super good to add some graphical design some graphic text there so graphic designers are gonna love you when you do this one because otherwise the photo is gonna be too crowded so here for example uh, there are like two cups obviously and then uh, i emphasize the subject which are which is the tea and then around my main subject so my main subject here is the tea but around the main subject there are different like negative space so definitely get the negative space and this is going to make your photos completely completely stand out and you get like a little bit more minimalistic look as well win-win <laughs> another thing is that this is one of my favorites is a color wheel no it doesn't mean that before you take a photo every time you check the color wheel but the color wheel is your tool your little little tool that gets you in a completely different level so get the color harmony between basic color palettes for example monochromatic shades like there's plenty of plenty of color combinations that can make uh, your photos stand out so usually what i do is that for example i have those radishes i know that radishes work together with green so like pink and green work together so you you match it together but obviously like for example here you can see like the food already that, like they know which colors work together they grow <laughs> together they're like they're like a big happy family who match together 
So choose your props colors according to the food, like play around with these ones, get some, like play around with everything or use like neutral colors on the backdrop. After you've shot your beautiful, beautiful pictures, after all the tips that we've given you and uh, you've got your photos, amazing photos, what you need to do is edit the photos. And uh, we are going to share a super awesome workflow tips to speed up your workflow and save you hours of frustration. And we're gonna talk about presets, which is like the one click magic editing. No filters, presets. They're two different things. And let's see what like the difference is. So sometimes photographers get frustrated because they spend hours and hours and hours at the computer editing. And sometimes that's not your favorite part because you, really enjoy taking the photos but maybe you don't enjoy editing the photos so much so instead of spending hours at your computer you learn Lightroom and you create your own presets to speed up your whole workflow so there are two different versions of Lightroom so whenever you go to the Adobe website, you have to choose Lightroom Classic CC. That is the desktop and laptop version of the Lightroom app, and it's the most complete, and it's the one that we are going to talk about. So Lightroom Classic CC. Now, the super amazing tip here is do 80 to 90% of your whole workflow in Lightroom. You need to have a system because this will save you hours of time. You will be able to find your images easily, even after years of shooting. For example, sometimes after shooting for 10 years, my archives are huge and a client comes to me and they're like, oh, do you have a photo of pasta? And I'm thinking, yeah, I have that amazing photo of pasta that I shot nine years ago. I wonder where it is. No, I don't wonder. I know exactly where it is. So I can go to my client and be like, yep, no worries. I got you. Here's your pasta photo that you asked. If you have a system from the beginning, you are going to uh, love me. Uh, So you're welcome. (laughs) And you're going to avoid image loss as well. You need to have a backup plan for your images so that you uh, you can avoid losing your images. And this Lightroom workflow, here I'm going to give you a step-by-step. It's basically, it's so so much of a time saver that it's basically like time traveling. So what you do, you open your Lightroom, you pop the memory card into your computer, and in Lightroom, you import your images from the memory card into the computer and into the Lightroom catalog. Then what you do is Lightroom has many, many shortcuts and very fast ways to cull your images so that you can select the good ones and discard the bad ones. This will make sure that your archive is nicely organized and that you don't have clutter and rubbish in it, basically, which will save you space in the long time, in the long run, because raw files are very heavy. So then You select the good ones, you organize them, and you back them up. This is super important. Make multiple copies of your good pictures, because if you lose them, ouch, that's like so painful. So make multiple copies. Then you get into the editing. So after you've organized your library, you apply your presets. And Laura's going to talk to you about that in a second. So Um, powerful. Exactly. So basically your uh, archive is like your bank account so it's so so important because again like for example sometimes i have like work that i did like three years ago and then i get like sales or someone is like looking for photos for this 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 and i can make money out of it so it's like it's your bank bank account so definitely take care of your wallet basically because this is uh, this is your thing yes um Absolutely. And uh, to finish up with the workflow, after you've organized your catalogs, made backups, you start with the editing, you apply your presets, 
Then after applying the presets, you fine tune your editing and then you do the local adjustments. All of this is happening in Lightroom and it's happening really fast because this is a, like a system that you can implement. And then after you've done all of your editing, you can export the images in the right format for the right platform. So if you're saving for Instagram, you want smaller files. If you're saving for your blog, you want bigger files. And by exporting them from Lightroom, you make sure that you have top quality images because the plat what happens if you upload any images on the platforms, they resize it for you and they generally do a, do a shit job about it. So you want to yes. export your images from Lightroom so that you get the best possible quality. And then you can take to the final step of your workflow is you take the images that you need to edit in Photoshop and you can do some uh, seriously advanced editing in Photoshop as well. Exactly. So here, for example, we, we are going to show you the develop module. And this is like the basic panel where you do like the basic edits. So what you're going to do is you adjust a little bit of white balance depending on the photo. Obviously, you were shooting on auto white balance, but again, like you Sometimes it needs some little bit tweaking, then you a little bit exposure, contrast, shadows, highlights. So this is all happening in Lightroom. And this is like one of the things you can make magic there. There's like different, different tools there, what you need to use. And out of this one, you're going to have like a magic there. Yes. So to make the workflow better, you need a shortcut. We're not here to spend all our life in Lightroom. We're here to make the workflow quicker. So what we need is Lightroom presets and Lightroom presets, they are not filters. So this is super, super important because people think uh, sometimes this is a complete misconception that if you use presets, then you're fine. You put the presets and run. No, you don't run. What you do is that you do a little bit of tweaking here and there because presets are made for you to have a consistent style, to have a better workflow, because at some point you realize that you change the settings to every photo, like super, super similar. So what you need is that you need some adjusting there uh, compared to every photo, especially like local adjustments. You want like, for example, that cookie to pop. So there's like no cookie on every photo. There's sometimes there's a smoothie bowl, there's a, there's, I don't know, peanut butter or whatever. So then local adjustments are completely different, but for consistent style and better workflow, Lightroom presets are essential. Like this is the key and you can save you 80 or 90% of time with only one click. And again, like you don't want to spend your whole life in laptop. There's a whole world out of there and you want to discover it. So again, like you start using the presets and get to know them, get your own presets, get, get to get, get your own style. And at first, obviously it's like super good to like start discovering your favorite photographer presets, because by this one, you can see like what kind of settings are they chatting, are, are they, are they using? What are they changing? Like, how does it work? Especially like the color grading, like this is like pure magic and it's so, so easy to use presets. And for example, here you can see like with, uh, with different presets, you can have a completely different look. So you can have a, a little bit of matte, matte presets, then you have bright and colorful. So it completely depends on your style. Like for example, on social media, you can like see, like sometimes it's like people like rec recognize photos only because of editing, because certain photographers have certain editing style yeah. and especially for example for Instagram you like a little bit over edited and this like it's got, like it works but it doesn't work but for example if you're gonna put the photo on the wall it should be like different so presets you can make magic only with one click and then you do some tweaking here and there so again like presets gives you consistency and makes your photography unique but again, like I would say like for food, it can't go like overboard and I would not use uh, different like lifestyle, uh, lifestyle presets for food because in the end of the day, you don't want alien food. Like, <laughs> exactly. yes, totally. you don't want alien food. You want realistic exactly. colors. <laughs> because in the end of the day, like food has to be, has to be different. So that's why presets for food, I would say are like a little bit different. So compared to, I don't know, for example, wedding photography, like lifestyle, like home decor, like they are a little bit different. So 
with food, you can't go like to airport or use the presets exactly for food. Because in the end of the day, you want food to look delicious, not like, oh, Alien what's food. happening here? <laughs> like eggs are suddenly orange or, yeah. or red or like... <laughs> Your brain doesn't exactly. get hungry. So you that's mean... why like even like editing in food photography is a little bit different. And there are like some techniques that food photographers use, but for example, wedding photographers or lifestyle photographers, they don't even know about it. But food is like, it's, it's, it's a little bit different. Very different. Right. So that was a lot to, to take in, but we've got a little recap for you. Uh, so first of all, as Gordon says, shoot raw. You get better quality, you get more data to work with in your editing. And it's just trust us, shoot yes. raw. <laughs> Yes, and if you don't trust us, trust, trust Gordon. Gordon. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and then uh, start with aperture priority, and to make manual mode like shift to manual mode easier, start playing around with your aperture. Shoot a little bit with 1.8, 1.5, like depends on your lens and camera. But again, like start with aperture priority just to get started, and then it's like easier to transfer complete manual. Yes, and in terms of light, don't shoot in your dark kitchen. Find a beautiful window with no direct sunlight and shoot next to it. Have the light, the window to the side of your food so that you get that beautiful side light and ta-da, and your photos will be transformed. Exactly, and for composition, start with the basics. Start with the rule of thirds and place your subject in the sweet spots. Yes, and for styling, use the color wheel to match your food to your props and to your backgrounds. And again, that's going to make a whole bunch of difference because you've got this beautiful um, magic. magic. Exactly. <laughs> so use Lightroom and use it to speed up your workflow and editing. And please don't start with any other editing platforms. Just start from the beginning with Lightroom because again, like Lightroom is the pure magic. It has so many options, so many like magic, 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 magic. So start with Lightroom and speed up your workflow. Don't spend hours and hours. And again, create your own presets. We don't use filters in food photography or in general in photography, don't use filters. Go beyond filters, go deeper, create your own presets that are specific for food. So you can start editing more quickly, more consistently, and you can start develop your own unique style, which is gonna make you stand out. Congrats on finishing the video course. And we hope you found this one useful. There's so much more to learn. And sure, you can binge on all the free resources, but... But it's gonna take you a lot of time, effort, frustration, because you don't have any structure and any guidance. If you really wanna skyrocket your food photography and take your skills to the next level, then check out our mini courses and check out our super active community where you can find ongoing support. Just click the link below and sign up.